Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whichever location you are watching this video. A very, very warm welcome to Questpond's YouTube channel. And what are we discussing today? Today we are discussing 10 points, 10 things which differentiates between a developer and an architect. See, you can have many senior people who are very good in coding, who can deliver uh, whatever you want, right, in a minute, in a day or whatever, right. But when it comes to architecting, there is a different mindset. There is a different thought process in which goes in, right? So 10 points I'm going to go through out here, right? And from where did I derive these 10 points? It, this, these all 10 points are derived by my personal experience. So wherever I have been working in whichever companies I have worked, right? I have seen that how architects work, right? Second, you know, I do a lot of training courses on architectures, on design patterns, right? In our quest point, we have regular courses. Like this month itself, you know, we have a course uh, which, which I'm starting an exclusive course which I'm starting on design pattern and architecture. Please, the link is down below. So in these courses, you know, what I've seen is that when students, when I ask questions, you know, saying that, okay, what is this, right? And, and in that courses, we also have people who are already architects, right? So must be they are coming there to upgrade to the next level, whatever, right? So when their answer comes up and when a developer answer comes up, that differentiation I see, right? So from that, I have concluded these 10 points. Let us go through all of the 10 points. And very quickly, before we start with all the 10 points out here, so we have an architecture course which is coming up, right? If you go and if you share this video on your LinkedIn, right? And if you send us a mail saying that we have shared this video out there, the first lecture you can sit for free. It's a live lecture which is happening this month. You can sit for free out there. The first example which I want to give here is about interfaces. When I ask a developer that, okay, what do you think like... Uh, um, about interfaces, right? He will say, oh, interfaces helps you to create a loosely coupled architecture. I use it in dependency injection. It uh, implements multiple inheritance and someone says it is good for unit testing, right? But when you, when you th think, you know, from an architect mind perspective, right? If you look at a person who is a senior person who understands interfaces, right? He will say that interface is for abstraction. Right? And all the other things are byproduct of abstraction. So in other words, abstraction means thinking from the 50,000 feet level. He will say, okay, like we have I logger. Now at the back of the I logger, it can be an email logger, it can be a file logger, it can be any other logger, right? And the byproduct, I'm repeating this word byproduct is, yeah, why not? A loosely coupled architecture because you're thinking abstractly. Yes, dependency injection because now you are thinking abstractly, you can inject email logger, you can inject file logger, right? Uh, then we are, when we talk about multiple inheritance, it is nothing but multiple abstraction, right? And so on. So when an architect looks at certain things, right, he thinks from the 50,000 feet level and he understands that what are byproducts, right? And what is the main thing? And before we start with the second point out here, very quickly, if somebody can summarize down below all the 10 points in the comments, right, it would help everyone. And most important is, see, these are 10 points from my perspective. In this channel, we have a lot of people who are seniors, who are architects. If you can also add value by writing in the comments, no, I think that architect does that, which a developer does not do or which a senior developer does not do. That will really help to add value to the community. Another example, you know, where I saw that the way developers think and architect thinks is that, you know, uh, for example, if I ask someone that, okay, tell me what is IOC, right? Many developers will say, oh, IOC means dependency injection. I mean, like, uh, people think that IOC is not a different word. They say DIIOC, right? Let me know that uh, on the comments below that how many people think that DI and IOC are completely connected, but they are very different. What IOC says, inversion of control says is that rather than I calling you, right, you call me. I mean, like if you Google around, you will, you will see that inversion of control is a Hollywood principle. I'm like <laughs> from the, from the, 50,000 feet level, it is not even IT. It, it has nothing to do with programming really, right? So what inversion of control says is that, okay, rather than me creating the object, I invert it. Somebody else will inject it from the constructor, right? That means what I, what I mean to say is that dependency injection is one of the ways of implementing inversion of control. Another way of implementing inversion of control is through delegates, through events. In other words, uh, in inversion of control, what happens? Your program is flowing, right? You have a program, right? He says that rather than I calling you and saying, okay, what happened? What happened? What happened? Let me do like this. Let me invert it. 
you tell me what happened right so i will make an http call http dot post or something and then you will through an event you will put the data back to me now many developers what they think is that oh inversion of control means dependency injection no inversion of control can be implemented by dependency injection inversion of control can be implemented by delegates inversion of control can be uh, implemented by events and many other mechanisms you know where you have a kind of a callback right so again here what i see is that they understand the difference between principles inversion of control is a principle dependency injection is a way of implementing it events is a technical way of implementing it they understand the difference between principles and implementation one more distinction which i have found between when an architect speaks or he understands things and developer is clarity in terms of technical vocabulary clarity in terms of technical jargons for example uh, that day in the class you know someone said that mvc is a design pattern now there is a difference between design pattern architecture pattern and architecture style in every class i talk about this right factory is not an architecture pattern rest is not an design pattern getting a dependency injection is not frankly a design pattern i know many people will argue around it so because if you look at design pattern is where you know some code or you know the pseudo code like if you say singleton pattern that means static keyword and constructor should be private or if you say uh, something like factory pattern then centralization of the new keyword you know you there is some code which is same for java which is same for c sharp which is same for python right when you talk about architecture pattern it is only block diagrams model view controller that's it now you implement by using asp.net mvc folder structure or something else and then we have architecture style rest uh soa right we have principles also like inversion of control is a principle right so i think this vocabulary clarity is important because see when you even speak in the interviews if you start mixing all these things together right it is very difficult you will clear the interview let think about it you know you are sitting before a, a, a senior person out there and you are you are messing up the vocabulary you are interchangeably using it 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 does not look good right so i think this is again one more point very clear very clear understanding of which vocabulary to use where another big distinction between a senior developer and an architect which i have seen is that or a developer and architect which i have seen is that the way they express themselves you will find that when they express themselves they will use standard formats or when they express themselves in in probably that expression can happen when they are speaking that expression can happen when they write a technical document or when they write the road map right they will use uml they will use class diagrams they will use sequence diagrams they will follow some ddd uh, fundamentals and so on right so you will always see a standardized approach which comes from a person who is an architect right uh, but if you see a normal developer right he will create prototypes he will write something in mail or will he create a project structure and give to them which is perfect right but what i'm trying to say is that a good architect architect who is there out there he can express in himself in writing a proper technical architecture document can be higher level can be lower level expressing in uml whenever he will write on the blackboard you will not see him drawing just block diagrams or circles if he draws a class diagram he will say these are the three things and the top one is a class name and the inheritance he will use a triangle arrow right in aggregation and composition he will use a fill diamond sign so when they express them express themselves in any platform either through a documentation or either when they are speaking right it shows off right and that also shows off in the interview see in a interview when you see a, a senior developer talking right he will just use some like okay this is controller this something he will use right but when you look at a senior architect his way of expression his 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 way of talking his technical jargons are like succinct and are like proper this is the most important part actually this should have been the part first uh, you know thing which i should have talked right management loves them customers love them you know why because you know they can do estimations they can come out with a proper estimate saying okay 10 man days 20 man days they understand pricing right for example if they are using azure they will say okay blob is cheaper or file is cheaper because they understand pricing right Uh, uh, the another important thing is what i've seen in good architects is like and, and I, i and i rate this architects as at the top level is as per the budget you know they will propose the architecture for example if you talk with a normal senior developer his architecture is fixed like 
okay model business layer services something something like but when you see a proper architect out there he'll say okay what is the budget that's it it's a small budget prototype he will not then talk about microservices he will not talk about something big out there he will for for, for prototyping then he will say okay what is the best way to do it right because the budget is less so again management sees lot of value in technical architects you know because you know they understand process they understand how to bring uh, how to come out with a pricing amount they understand the various flavors of architecture how they fit around the budget they understand the pricing right if you give them a saying that okay is a as your costly or aws they will come out with a proper road map their one sharp eye is always on non functional requirement like normally what happens is when you look at a senior developer he will say oh like okay so i will create this class i will inherit from this class i will create such kind of a normalized database right the whole focus you know goes only on the business but normally we all also have a lot of non functional requirements you know saying that okay we want to have uh, this kind of security we want to cater to this many users right so they understand how to use load balancers right they understand that if you want to use load balancers then we should have um how do you say it uh, we should not have sticky sessions right uh, if you want to have high performance you know they will suggest a cache and so on right so one mind of there is always very alert about the non functional requirement and when they talk with the customer the non functional requirement is always asked by an architect and he sees that that is that is taken care you know while he is doing his architecture uh, good architects are very much aware of the different architecture styles or different architectures which are time tested in the market for example they are aware that okay there is a uh, how do you say clean architecture you know there is also an onion architecture there is also an hexagonal architecture and there is also like the classical architecture you know where we have a layered architecture they understand this is layer this is tiers right and they know that i mean like when they look at that architecture out there right they know that how it will convert into a folder structure for example if i ask you now right and that day i i asked in the class that tell me what is the difference between a clean architecture and um, uh, a clean architecture and a onion architecture right uh, many developers were drawing circles and circles right uh, many of them actually told the essence saying, saying that the the domain does not refer and he does but i'll say that what is the difference if, if if both of them are onion and onion right what is the difference right but when you ask a proper architect person he will say that oh so when you talk about clean architecture i should see use cases right i will i will ask i will you know i will put down in the chat you know what i am speaking here in a clean architecture and uh, you know uh, onion architecture the biggest difference it in onion architecture you will see that developers use services to communicate right that from that internal layer when the model when somebody wants to speak to a model they will have a service layer but when you actually look at a clean architecture there is a use case there is a verb there is a command like create customer update customer cqrs comes into picture so they they clearly understand that okay how the folder structure will be and what kind of classes will come there and by looking at the folder structure they will say oh this is a clean architecture or this is a um uh, what do you say on onion architecture so again different architecture styles which are time tested in the market they are very much aware of it and they know that how they how that should be fit into the project this difference you know differentiates between a not between a developer and an architect it differentiates between an architect and a legendary architect or a ninja architect right and that is the naturality of understanding patterns naturality of understanding architecture right in other words what i'm saying is for example if i ask a senior developer which patterns have you used there are some fixed patterns in his mind factory pattern singleton pattern or facade or something right many architect architects whom i talked with when i told them that what do you think you know which design pattern have you used many of them have said adapter i have yet to see some senior developer out there or some proper person out there saying that i have used adapter adapter is like everywhere we use it because adapter is nothing but a wrapper right for making the interfaces uniform iterator pattern left and right right so what happens is and you know what that in a interview i normally ask people that okay when you actually write your technical document uh, do you think about design pattern and when they say no 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 yes yes we think about design pattern that is wrong actually design patterns cannot be decided at the architecture level when the developer actually sites starts writing the code you can identify some design patterns at the architect level you architecture level when you creating the architect like 
uh, the block diagrams or whatever right you can but it's up to the developer at the end of the day to implement design patterns frankly means when he's writing a for each loop right and he says oh like looks like the collection is getting tampered i have to now use iterator pattern when he says that okay i want to copy this complete object into this new object right i need to do cloning i need to do deep cloning must be i need to do shallow cloning which is prototyping right so uh, you know this the the implementation of design pattern actually happens at the lower level again this is this the, archi the architect who was a real architect right he understands design pattern naturally and not artificially one more important thing i have seen in architects is that they understand standard methodologies or time tested methodologies of how to convert a requirement into an architecture or into the final source code right in other words uh, they understand approaches like example in ddd ddd is one of the approach you know where you have first a strategic approach planning approach 50000 feet level you do strategic planning you do you discuss domains you discuss sub domains and so on please down below i am putting the link out there where you can look at that what is strategic ddd so there's a planning phase then you have the tactical ddd where you identify entities you identify this that right this is one standard way of doing it another standard way is by using c4 model right so they understand the different methodologies out there right and uh, they adapt to some of these methodologies and they use it uh, you know when they are actually architect right which i think is the most important part as well right architects never think that there is a silver bullet for example when i talk with uh, some of the developers out there i see that oh like uh, solid aa gaya to sab kuch aa gaya because they feel that solid is like solid you will become a solid architect right so some people feel that okay if i know solid everything is clear if i know diioc i will become an architect but i think a real architect knows that this is not what it is right it takes a lot of other things it takes this it takes that it takes design pattern it takes architecture pattern it takes communication through uml it takes must be understanding c4 model it takes that it takes load balancing it takes solutioning right he understands that it is not just one part or it is not just one thing it is the overall way how i should look at solutioning okay so that brings us to the end of all of this three uh, 10 points i'm sorry right and all the 10 points i'm flashing on the screen out there you know at this moment the time is tough if you see last time i had recorded a video on tcs layoff right and i really don't want to record you know such kind of non tech videos but over there if you see the emphasis is clearly on seniors now you can't have seniors just doing programming it is not helping out you have to do programming you have to do coding you have to know coding right but at the same time you have to know that how to plan from the 50000 feet level right so i would suggest you know all the seniors out there architecture should be a part of you design pattern should be a part of you right so that's it right and and as i said that my architecture training is starting right the link is down below if you can click on the link there is a chat window out there you can just chat and ask that when is the training and so on if interested do enroll right second if you go and if you share this video anywhere in your linkedin the first lecture you can attend for free out there right so go ahead you know do some architectures out there and what i'm also doing is that in the down comments i have lot of videos of architecture like we have the uh, architecture interview questions we have the the microservices training uh, video right i've just posted those videos out there so we do have some one or two hours of free videos which i posted on my youtube channel must be it would be a good start if you can start from there as well right so thank you very much happy learning happy job hunting be billable thank you